beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Now Our first reading this evening comes from Exodus chapter 3. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses and Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord.
second reading this evening comes from Romans chapter 10. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Hopefully my clicker works tonight. That's a little too far. There you go, we're at the beginning. <laughs> All of you, many of you know that my wife's name is Madeline. And Madeline uh, comes from Magdalene. Magdalene, like St. Mary Magdalene in the Bible, Beautiful name, is it not? And uh, Magdalene simply means from Magdala, which is a little village on the coast of the Sea of Galilee. Madeline, my wife, also has some other names. Her grandmother called her Mickey. It wasn't a real flattering name. Uh, name because she was called her Mickey after Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Excuse me, Mick, I'm sorry. <laughs> her mother, until her dying day, called her Minnie. <laughs> Family and friends called her Mick. I occasionally, lovingly, call her Maud. I saw, signed all my, I write on all my Valentine's cards to Maud. Anyway, I had a friend who was a couple years younger than me in, in high school, and I, I guess he was an acquaintance in college also. But he was one of these people who was so nervous around members of the opposite sex that he couldn't think straight. And he always called Mick, Mitch. And I called Mick, Mitch a couple of times. Did I tell you I, my wife is a fiery woman? <laughs> I don't do that anymore. <laughs> and why? She has the right to be upset. We get bothered about our names and when they're not used right. And God Almighty does too. Second commandment, you shall, not take, you shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Simple, straightforward, and we might wonder what's the big deal and hopefully by the end of the sermon you know. What does this mean, or what is this, Martin Luther would ask, or what does this mean? And we have this. We are to fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, practice magic, lie, or deceive using God's name, but instead use that very name in every time of need to call on, pray to, praise, and give thanks to God. Notice we have what we're not supposed to do with God's name and also what we're supposed to do, the positive to-dos. Names for God in the Hebrew scriptures, El, 
Whenever you see a name that ends in L, E L, that always means that there's something about God in that name. For instance, my name is Daniel. It means God judges or God is thy judge. Eloha is the, a very early name for God used by Abraham. And we uh, looked at this in our um, Sunday study on Islam. When that name made its way into the Middle East, in the churches in the Middle East, they started calling God Allah. And that is believed, they believed that Muhammad then picked that up from the Mideastern Christians when, they, when he says Allah. Elohim is the plural for Eloha, and Elohim means uh, creator, mighty and strong. El Shaddai, God Almighty. And then we have the simple Adonai, that's probably used most often. Adonai means Lord, it's just translated Lord. And then the Tetragamatron, which is Yahweh, those four consonants. It's, it's a Christian guess. Jews do not, they did not want to speak God's proper name. So they just left the consonants, Y-H-W-H, and Christians originally guessed that it was Jehovah. Now our guess is it's Yahweh. And you'll see whole Bibles written with Yahweh in it. Our Bible, when I say our Bible, if you use the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, whenever they came to Yahweh, it's written in capital letters, L-O-R-D, Lord God. The Jews, I, I don't know if you ever have any correspondence with a Jewish person, some Jewish people who are extremely devout won't even write God out. They'll write sometimes three dashes or sometimes e even our English word for God or G dash dash or G dash D. We know that God's name is holy and unutterable and unchanging. Therefore, we say Hashem, the no-name name, which is a substitute title for this endless, unknowable entity. The one thing we would say we disagree with there is that God is not unknowable. We know him through Jesus Christ. So where did this name come from? By the way, I can't help but show off a little bit. A. Freeberg painted this painting, Arnold, Freeburg. No relation to me whatsoever. <laughs> that I know of, anyway. Spells his name the same way. He did all the uh, set drawings uh, for, and paintings, uh, painted them all, for Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments. So we had read that story of Moses in the burning bush. Remember Moses, he was a fugitive hiding out from the Egyptians because he had murdered an Egyptian. And because of that, he was afraid that they would do likewise to him. So he ran off, got married, worked now as a shepherd for his father-in-law Jethro. And he's on Mount Horeb, our Bible calls it, the, the mountain of God, uh, same as Mount Sinai. They, uh, he's there, and he encounters a bush that burns, but it isn't consumed. And he hears that voice from it. And notice, the voice tells him, uh, take off your shoes, this is holy ground. And then and tells him not to look. And he... And certainly, he didn't want to see God because it was believed you would die. And Moses asked the question. Uh, <clears throat> the voice, Almighty God, 
calls him and says, you're going to go down to the Egyptians and demand the release of my people. I've heard their cries. They are suffering. So you're going to go demand the release. And Moses, and, and God said, and if you go, I'll go with you. That's the promise. I'll go with you. Now that's unique among uh, the understanding of a deity that God would go with someone. So the promise here, God would go with you. That promise was first promised to Abraham. If you follow me, if you believe in me, if you do what I say, I will go with you. And now God is going to go with, with Moses. Moses asks, but who are you? If someone should ask what your name is, what should I tell them? And that's when God says, I am who I am. It means being. It, it's actually a verb, being. I am, I was, I am, I will be. I exist. I be, the, the, the best understanding is being. But that I am who I am is the tetragametron, that those four consonants that we understand to, to pronounce Yahweh. That is my name, Yahweh, to be. Again, it's a word that good Jews do not say. We say Hashem, the no-name name, which is a substitute title for this endless, unknow uh, unknowable entity. And we say, no, you can know him. What's the improper use of God's name? We are to fear and love God so that we do not curse. When we see that word curse, we think of all these silly vulgarities, barnyard language people use, right? Curse means that's exactly what people did. Uh, the, the ancients cursed. They, they wanted their deities to curse people, to make their lives miserable. Uh, even all the way into ancient Rome, they were still using their deities to, to uh, curse people. If somebody opened a restaurant across the street from your restaurant, you'd say, oh, I better go down to the temple to put a curse on that person. So we're not to curse. Swear, again, we use that uh, in conjunction with the word curse and think of them as synonyms. But swear, it's like a child who says, Believe, I'm telling the truth, crisscross my heart and hope to die. We do it in court. We put our hands, our right hand on the Bible to swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. And oh boy, I'm glad you said that because otherwise you wouldn't have really told the truth, would you? If we're really people of integrity, people who are following God, we don't need to swear. Practice magic. Uh, satanic cults will use God's name in vain. Of course, use God's name to lie or deceive. You're not to do that. Mary Gordon tells us what happens when we act the way we're not supposed to. When we use uh, words that curse, it really changes us. Barbara Brown Taylor, uh, Betty Carlton gave me this book, and in it, Barbara Brown Taylor tell, tells the story of 
Mary Gordon, who was telling about her anger and how it caused her to say things that she regretted. Uh, Mary was uh, working in the kitchen, cleaning, uh, washing dishes, and uh, making the supper when it was a hot summer's day and her mother, Mary's mother, came into the room and said, Mary, stop what you're doing right now. You're taking us swimming. Mary was supposed to take her mother and her two children to the pond. So they go out in the car and they sit in the car and beep the horn and yell Mary's name and Mary says, I just lost it. I went stamping outside. I jumped on the hood of the car. And this is what she said. I pounded on the windshield. She told her mother and her children that she was never, ever going to take any of them anywhere and none of them was ever going to have one friend in any house of hers until the hour of their death. Which she said, she hoped was soon. <laughs> then she said, a frightening thing happened. I became a huge bird, a carrion crow. My legs became hard stalks. My eyes were sharp and vicious. I developed a murderous beak. Greasy black feathers took the place of arms. I flapped and flapped. I blotted out the sun's light with my flapping. Even after she had been forced off the hood of the car, she said it took her a while to come back to herself. And when she did, she was appalled because she realized she had genuinely frightened her children. Her son said to her, I was scared because I didn't know who you were. I was scared because I didn't know who you were. Well, the same thing happens to us with language and names, especially God's name. Think of Uh oh. Drew, advance me for me. Let's, let's talk about the, uh, Jesus. You see, we're not supposed to use God's name in vain, but in, at the same time, it it's, it's, has been said that Jesus said, never said he was God. But if you read the Gospel of John, Seven times. There's seven I am sayings. And it's very clear. And Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. He's not mincing any words. He's trying to let people know he is indeed Jesus, but he is indeed equating himself with God. He had a discussion with some Jewish uh, people, Jesus did in John chapter 8, and they were upset with him and saying, well, we have Father Abraham. He's the one we follow. And Jesus said, well, you know, if Father Abraham was here, he'd be pleased at what he heard from me. And then they said, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. Now he could have said, I was, but he said, I am. When we are baptized, 
we carry God's name. We're baptized into the name of Christ. You carry God's name with you. We honor God's name, attempt to. He gives us. We're baptized into his name. On top of it, Jesus says, I no longer call you servants because the servant does not know where the master is going, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. It shows us how we can know God through Christ. So the proper use of God's name Instead, we are to use that very name in every time of need to call on, pray to, praise, and give thanks to God. I don't know how, by the way, Martin Luther said, you know, in looking at those, those words, we're to call on God in every time of need to call on, pray to, Praise God. Luther said, we ultimately get whom, whom we call upon. If we call upon ourselves, that's what we get. If we call upon God, if we, if we call upon God, God shows up. He's trying to tell us that God shows up in our rightful use of his name in prayer, in praise, in worship. So my challenge is, for this week, I don't know what your prayer life is like, but when you pray this week, think of four things that God has blessed you with. Four things. Or to use God's name in blessing. Thank him for those blessings. Remember them. And remember that God always goes with us. Amen.
From whom, all, who, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Ah. Uh...